I'm currently sitting in the corner of my room and I really don't know why this is the choice I made but I made it so now I just have to commit to it. So I guess I'm filming here now. Um, so hi, hello, it's been a while. Welcome back if you've been around for a while or welcome if you're new here. I'm Kav and this is my booktube channel that I accidentally took a three month long hiatus from. I'm not gonna lie, I feel pretty awkward right now. It has been a while since I've filmed anything. I uploaded one video in December, but that was pre-filmed months before. So the last time I was consistently posting was in October. So that means that the last time I filmed was like mid-October. So it has been a while since I've sat down and filmed anything. So talking to a camera feels pretty unnatural right now. I didn't intend. To take a hiatus it was not planned which is why i never really addressed it because i never thought that it was happening if that makes any sense it was kind of just like a week went by when i didn't post a video because i was busy or because something had happened and then another week went by and then time just kept building on and now it is the middle of january and i have tried to come back to booktube as well multiple times i actually intended to film videos in december because the end of the year is a really great time to make videos there's a lot of content that you can put out at that time in the year so like i had a favorite books of 2019 video plans and i had a 2019 in review video planned and i had a ton of other videos planned like i had videos scheduled throughout november and throughout december and even when i didn't make my favorite books video at the end of december i planned to make it at the beginning of january and none of them happened so there are a couple different reasons for my unofficial hiatus i guess and i'm gonna go through them all but there's one in particular that i want to talk about when i originally stopped posting videos in november it was due to my depression. That was the only reason I didn't post anything in November. And then at the beginning of December, it was a combination of my depression and the chaos of it being the end of my first quarter of college. There was just a lot happening because of that. I had papers to write and finals to take, so that was also taking up a ton of my time. And then at the end of December, I went on a family trip, so I was on a different continent, so I couldn't film or post anything while I was away and then when I came back home I had to deal with jet lag, depression and then finally when I was starting up my second quarter of college I was like well I'm getting back into the swing of things anyway so I might as well film and then the day I swear the day I planned to film again I fell sick and it was bad i'm not even totally better now but i am like 80 percent there but like it was bad i was barely able to get out of bed for a few days so i could not film a single thing so there were a few different things that came up there was you know the end of my first quarter of college just that kind of chaos that happens then there was my trip and then there was being sick but the primary reason for me not uploading was my depression and that's what i want to talk about i guess inevitably i I guess that's what it's come to. I didn't really plan to talk about that in this video, but here we are. I didn't really plan anything for this video because filming feels so unnatural at this point. I don't think I've ever taken a break this long off of YouTube since I started almost four years ago. So <laughs> yeah, I feel pretty weird now. So I've talked about my depression multiple times on this channel. It isn't a new thing. Back in 2018, towards the end of the year, I think, I made a video about my depression relapse. And then sometime in 2019, I made a video that was starting a new series about mental health called End the Stigma. And the first video was about my depression. So yeah, I have talked about it before on my channel and I have been actively dealing with it for two more years now. I mean, like I've been dealing with my depression since I was like, I don't know, 10, 11, but then things got better and I was well into recovery and then in 2018 things kind of got bad again so i've been actively dealing with it again since then but towards the end of 2019 things got really bad like i reached a low that i didn't think I would reach again and I want to give a trigger warning before continuing because I'm going to get into a little bit of detail here so I suggest you proceed with caution because I don't want anyone to watch anything that will end up hurting themselves so towards the end of November things were like really 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 bad to the point where I basically couldn't get out of bed like I would just kind of lie 
in bed and I would get up maybe once or twice to like feed my cat but I was unable to remove myself from bed like it was bad I had to be watching Netflix or I would be uncontrollably sobbing if my eyes weren't on the screen like I literally could not do anything else because the minute I tried to do anything else I just started crying uncontrollably so things were not good at the end of my first quarter of college things got really 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 bad so i have to kind of preface this with a little bit of history school has always been the number one priority for me that's just kind of how my life has been it's how i was raised it's just what the culture was it was just what the structure was school was the number one priority for me so i basically prioritize my education over anything else including myself and my health and by no means do i suggest doing that because it is one of the worst decisions i've ever made i do think education is important and it should be a priority but not so much so that it is detrimental to your health and to your well-being so school has always been the number one priority i have done school well at the cost of my health and my well-being and my safety and that's kind of what started happening towards the end of the quarter but my depression got so bad that i just couldn't like I straight up couldn't do school well anymore so for the first time in my entire life and I'm in my first year of college so I've been through a lot of school for the first time in my entire life I didn't do an assignment I didn't do one of my major essays for my English class because I literally could not write it I'm not sure if I can like explain in words what it means for the fact that I couldn't do an assignment because that has never happened to me before I physically could not write the essay like I couldn't do it I ended up actually ditching class for the first time in my life and the night that I had to write the essay because it was due the next day but I couldn't things reached an ultimate low and I relapsed and I self-harmed I used to self-harm before my suicide attempt I actively self-harmed for a period of time but after my suicide attempt I haven't until December 2019. I was four years clean and I relapsed all because of a fucking essay. I mean obviously it wasn't just the essay, like anyone who knows anything about mental health knows that it wasn't just an essay. The essay was the tipping point but it was a culmination of things and that was just the tipping point. That was when I was like oh things are bad. This can't continue and this is not the first time I'm talking about it. Like my therapist and my treatment team are well aware and I haven't self-harmed since like early December so or mid-December or something so I'm like a month clean so it is something I'm getting help for like you don't need to worry about me in that way going on the family trip was really scary for me and I love my family I'm very thankful to have them they are very good people and everything but there were still certain things about the trip that were a lot for me first of all just being in India the environment is so different that it really heightens my anxiety it's a very crowded place and being in crowds gives me anxiety and during this family trip like the entire family was there so there was a lot of people in the house so it was a lot of stimulation and that also worsens my anxiety so the family trip also posed some difficulties for me in India I actually almost had like three consecutive panic attacks for the first time in a year or something. My anxiety has actually been relatively okay recently. My depression has been the bigger issue, but once I entered India, my anxiety got really bad again. When I was coming back to the US, it was a new year. It was 2020 by the time I got back, so I'd kind of entered the mindset of like, yeah, things have been really bad now, but it's a new year. We're gonna get things in order. I'm gonna get myself in order. I'm just gonna go back into the swing of things and I'm gonna get my life together i guess but that did not quite work my depression was really bad when i got back there were like a couple days where i just slept all day and it might have been also partially jet lag but a lot of it was also my depression that was the reason i was sleeping all day and then i was up all night i was pulling all-nighters because i literally couldn't turn my brain off if i tried to put my phone away or tried to put whatever i was doing away and i tried to shut my brain off it just didn't happen like my thoughts would just be depression central so i couldn't put stuff away at night i just had to be like watching netflix until i fell asleep because if i put my phone away or if i put whatever i was doing away my brain would just be having really bad thoughts so then i would end up pulling all-nighters because when i'm doing stuff all night it's harder for me to fall asleep so then i'd end up sleeping during the day and it was just bad and eventually i did get out of that cycle and then i was going back to college and you know going back to class like i didn't really have a choice i had to get back into the swing of things because i had to go to class like i couldn't choose not to but then i fell ridiculously sick like the second 
day, I think, of going back to college. So then that put a damper on the whole now I have to get my life back in order thing because I couldn't do anything. So yeah <laughs> um my depression is still pretty bad as you can tell because there was no hopeful ending to this story but see the thing is life doesn't go on hold just because your brain is fucked up i don't know like i just realized that i couldn't keep not doing stuff potentially i could just keep not making videos but that's not getting me anywhere either so like yeah i'm depressed but like i have to make videos sometime I have to start doing stuff again sometime. My life just doesn't go on hold because my brain has problems. So I'm here and I am trying to make videos again because I do love YouTube. It has been the center of my life for almost four years and it feels really weird to say that I haven't filmed a video in so long. Being a booktuber has basically been my identity. So I'm not gaining anything by not making videos either. Like, it's not benefiting me in any way. For some people, it can benefit them to take that kind of break, but it's not benefiting me. It's just making me feel worse because I want to be making content. I want to be talking about books, talking about the stuff I'm interested in, even though I haven't read a book in almost two months as well because, again, depression. But at some point, I just have to start doing shit again. There is no choice. You just have to get back to life because life doesn't wait for you. So I'm making videos again, I guess. I'm doing this YouTube thing. One of the things that has kept me from coming back to YouTube, you know, as time went on, it just got harder. Like first it was a month. So it was like, okay, maybe I can come back. But then it was another month and then another week passed and then another week passed. And as the break got longer, coming back felt more daunting. Originally, I was just going to come back like with a favorite books of 2019 video, but this is the longest I've ever not been on YouTube since starting, and it felt weird to just come back and not address where I've been. Even though like I have been active on my other social media, like I've been active on Instagram, I've been active on Twitter, but it just felt weird to just not address why I haven't been making content. And then there's also just the thing of how much pressure I put on myself to make like a certain level or a certain quality of videos. Booktube is something I want to pursue, but something I want to keep in my life forever. It's something I want to turn into some kind of job because I love it so much. And so I hold myself up to a certain standard that has just been a lot of pressure for me. So I have to try to not anymore and be okay with the fact that my videos might be subpar quality for a while because that's all I can handle right now and I don't want to stop making content. Okay, so I write fanfiction under a pseudonym that no one will ever find. I will never tell anyone that identity. But when I do that, it feels so pressureless. First of all, I do it just for me, not for any kind of audience. And also no one knows it's me. I'm doing it just for fun. I'm just having a good time but when i'm doing youtube this is me this is like my real face and i have an audience even if it's not a giant audience i do have an audience that i feel i owe something decent to and this isn't just for fun like yes booktube first and foremost is fun but it's also kind of a professional thing for me because I want to be a writer because I want booktube to be some kind of career for me that would be my ultimate goal for me to at least make some kind of money even if it's not my primary source of income and it's also a professional thing for me because I want to write a book I want to be an author so it's not purely fun yes it is fun but it's more than that there's some level of responsibility and expectation that comes with it unlike when I'm writing secret fanfiction that is just for me and for shits and giggles basically but i just have to start doing it again again like no one's gonna wait around for me i just have to come back myself and just keep making content but with that i want to talk about what i have in store for 2020 content wise in february i'm going to be doing a series in anticipation of chain of gold which is the first book of the last hours which is cassandra clara's new series and now that i have said it in this video i have to hold myself accountable and actually make that series happen my videos are in general gonna stay the same you know i'll still be doing like reviews and all that stuff but i think i'm gonna primarily gear my content towards more discussion type videos 
videos like you know stuff that you'd see in diversity 101 and and the stigma and really anything you'd see in like my getting real playlist but i'm still gonna be doing the other stuff like reviews are still gonna happen tags challenges those types of things are still gonna happen just not as much as discussion videos because discussion videos are just what i have the capability of doing right now but outside of booktube i also have a couple other bookish things that i'm doing that i'd love your support in first of all a help moderate a book club called bookbound society and we went on a bit of a hiatus december january because my co-host unfortunately had to leave so i brought on a new team of co-moderators and we all have just been planning deciding what we want for bookbound these last two months but now we have reached a plan and we are bringing bookbound back in february so i'd really love if you guys are into book clubs and such if you checked out bookbound and see if it's something you're interested in because it's really really close to my heart i've been a part of the team for a while now and i love being a part of bookbound and yeah the team has changed but it's still the same at its heart so i'd really love you guys to check that out i also just want to mention the magazine i write for i write for brown girl magazine and i'm actually doing a piece about my depression for them i don't know when it's going up i'm still in the process of you know working on it and everything but it's the most important thing i've ever written and i write articles regularly for brown girl magazine so if you're interested in checking that out i would also really appreciate your support over there but yeah that's it for this video tell me how you guys have been i mean i've still been active on twitter and instagram so like i haven't completely fallen off the face of the earth but still tell me what your lives are like i haven't been watching as much booktube but i'm hopefully gonna correct that now but yeah tell me if you guys are actually reading books in january tell me what that reality is like because i can't relate if you have been one of the people that's been supporting me these last few months on my other platforms just while i've been gone thank you so much from the bottom of my heart i really appreciate it like you guys are the ones who made me feel safe enough to have this conversation and to come back and to be here filming this if you've made it to the end of this horrible mess of a video i really truly appreciate you sticking around thank you so much for everything you guys have done for me not just for watching this video but just everything thank you so much for watching this video i guess i hope you enjoyed it i don't really know if it was enjoyable content but regardless give it a like and subscribe because that stuff makes me happy and as usual all of my social media will be in the description below if you'd like to see me shit post on twitter yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you're having a lovely day or night wherever you are please remember that you are beautiful and you save the world and i will see you soon for a brand new video goodbye